I'm Mary Ann Berg. I'm a professor of social work in the School of Social Work at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida. In my current role, I teach doctoral students and master's level social work students, and I do research in behavioral medicine. My background has been uh, primarily working in primary care settings. And in my previous career, I spent about 15 years working in a family medicine department uh, where we got to train students from all the health professions, including nursing, medicine, pharmacy, social work, psychology, physical therapy, in our outpatient clinics uh, that were associated with our department. So in the discipline of social work, what we do is we really look at the patient from a very holistic point of view. And we try to understand what a patient needs to help them stay as healthy as they can, what they need to actually access health care, uh, what support they need to um, get their medicines, get insurance, um, and find uh, health care for themselves, and also how to support themselves when they're going through health care crises. We need to work with all the disciplines uh, in order to get a patient their optimal level of health care. So we have to work with nursing, with medicine, with pharmacy, with psychology. Um, we help to bring patients into a system where they get to see and work with this team that will keep them as healthy as possible. And we kind of weave the thread for patients so that they get to get the best they can from that team. Most of my experience has been in a primary care setting. And typically in a primary care setting, at least the ones you'll see out there in the community, there is a physician, there are some staff nurses, and, um, and there are office people. Uh, there are not the other professionals that are really necessary, I think, for keeping patients really healthy. Uh, and so what happens is a patient will come to the typical primary care clinic, they will get their immediate needs met, but there will be no understanding of what, it, what they might need to actually, for instance, get their medications. Do they have insurance? Do they have access to, um, to uh, specialists in the community? Do they need some psychological help in, in understanding what they need to do to motivate themselves to keep healthy. So if you don't get those things in place, if you don't have a team that helps pull all those pieces together, then patients may not do what the doctor asked them to do because they're not capable of it. And that's why we need an inter interdisciplinary primary care healthcare team to really keep people as healthy as they can be. In my education as a social worker, I was really lucky on my internships to have interprofessional collaboration. Um, for example, I worked in a Veterans Administration psychiatric uh, clinic, and every morning we would have a team care conference where all the different health professionals would come together to talk about the patients and what, where they were at and what their needs were and so we would sit together, physicians, psychiatrists, nurses, social workers, psychologists, et cetera, and really come together to agree on how to uh, develop the best treatment plan for our patients. I think that was an incredibly good experience for me and really gave me the opportunity to see the value of working together with the other disciplines and probably helped me move in the direction that I did in my professional career so that I would have more of those opportunities in the future.
One of the most important principles of healthcare that we believe in in social work and that I think is really um, important in working with an interprofessional team is the belief that we have to work with a patient's strengths. We have a strengths perspective in social work, which means that um, we don't see a person just as a disease. We see the person as um, a system of social supports, community supports, and personal characteristics that if we um, do the right job of invoking all of those, um, those potential supports to help a patient, that they will do a lot better job in staying healthy. And um, I think when you have an interprofessional team that also agrees with that kind of ethic about practice, you get much better outcomes. I think it's really important that um, when you're working in an interprofessional team that you really understand what the values and the competencies are of each of the professions and what lens they typically use when they're looking at a patient, when they're assessing a patient, and when they're thinking about how to treat a patient because each profession brings a slightly different lens and if you don't understand that, you're going to have a hard time working on a team and negotiating um, approaches to patients. Uh, if you know that a physician takes a particular view on a patient and a nurse does and a psychologist takes a very different view, then you know how to work um, more effectively in a collaboration around a patient. I have a great story about how interprofessional healthcare can work. It's a bit of an extreme example, but I think it really shows how important it is to bring different things together to help patients. When I worked in the family medicine clinic, one of the staff nurses came to my office and said she had gotten some calls from a patient's family who lived out in the rural area near our, our health center, and uh, they wanted us to help them get their their daughter some health care and they said it would require that we come see her at the home. So the staff nurse and I and one of my social work interns went out to this um, home in the country. It was a very rundown little two bedroom home. We walked inside and found out that the patient in question was a morbidly obese young woman who um, was in such a state that she hadn't been able to leave her bed for two years. Um, so what we did as a team, we started, the nurse started taking her vitals and, and did, some blood pool, did some blood work. And while she was doing that, the social work intern and myself interviewed the family. And what we found was that uh, this poor young woman had been unable, to, literally unable to get out of her house for two years. Um, and the family was, as you can imagine, having a very difficult time supporting her uh, keeping her healthy and she was starting to get bed sores and they were very concerned about that and yet they couldn't get her into a clinic to be seen. So we worked with the family to prioritize the health care needs for this patient and, their, and her family and what we decided was the first thing we needed to do was to get her house worked on so that she could be evacuated in, in case of an emergency, a fire, or just to get to the clinic. Um, and we actually brought in a team of, of volunteer home builders to widen the doors of the house and to make a wheelchair ramp to make it accessible for her to be evacuated. We then realized also that the family needed a lot of support in terms of getting her treated in the home uh, for the time being and so we set up home care and financing for the home care uh, so that she could get you know immediate care in the home. Uh, and then eventually we were able to get the paramedics in the community to volunteer to come and, and help get this woman into the hospital so she could get consultation with a gastric bypass surgeon and get some other of her health care needs taken care of. And in the very end what we 
we did, we, we helped the community uh, leaders to realize that this was a very serious problem that they had with one of their residents. And they actually got some money to build this family a new home that was very accessible and a much healthier um, situation for her and her family. So that is a bit of an extreme example, but in that example we had nurses, we had social work, we brought in nutritionists into the home, we had surgeons, we had paramedics, and we even had the city council involved in getting this woman the health care she needed. Um, and it was all based on the principles that you have to work with the team sometimes, most of the time, uh, especially in extreme circumstances. And that team really has to value certain things. For instance, you all have to agree that every patient deserves good health care regardless of their situation. And sometimes you have to go out of the box to make that happen. And you definitely have to work as a team in order to make that happen. So that was a great example, and I'm very happy that my social work intern got to see and work on that case, and I'm sure it made a big difference in her life as it did in mine. <laughs>